Well? Well, 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 hello. Well, hello, Dave. What are you welling about? I'm welling about this fantastic tournament idea that you have that I literally came up with multiple months ago, but I never pulled the trigger on, and you were there first, so good job. No, seriously? You had the same idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a week oh, later. No way. Uh, well, Dave, I have a lot of ideas that I never follow through with, though. So, uh, well done. I'm I'm sorry, Dave, if I stole your idea. It was not intentional. I didn't know that you had that in mind. Yep. Well, now you do. So now you can regret it. But you have this tournament. I probably never would have done it. So <laughs> here we are, and uh, this is your finals, right? <laughs> this is my finals. So, Dave, am I right that you are not too upset with me then? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. Good. God, no. How could I good. be upset with you? Okay, that that's good then. So, I'm I'm happy, Dave, that you have come to co-cast with me, and I assume that means you're done with Rage Forest so far. Yeah, I mean, I mean, not gonna lie, one best five set with multiple games going like an hour plus is enough for me for Black Forest. Yeah. I think I I think I committed enough. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Like for special, especially team games are very hard to cast, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So where Dave. are we? What map is this? Yeah, Canyon. this this one is called Canyon, and uh, you know I've added three very new maps to the map pool to make mm -hmm. things spicy, to make things diverse, and I'm also planning to always have new maps for the future events as well, right? So this is just one of them. And literally, as you can see, it is kind of looking like Arabia. For me, it's kind of a mixture out of Arabia and sloped. Because on the sides, you can see that you have a high ground, right? Where you have extra resources. And you have that on the left and the right hand side. And in the middle, everything is fairly open. So, yeah, I, I like that map. And I was thinking, Dave, I want to have that one. Yeah, this I I was thinking slopes, the one from Hidden Cup, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so you just you have the edges on the side; they're a little bit less, and you don't have the wood line all the way around. Also, mm. you don't have those shorefish in exactly. here, but it looks like yeah. there's still the occasional pond with shorefish. Yeah, and Valesa has still gone for Indians, which were a really popular pick there, if I remember correctly. Yeah, what you saw there is was Indians, Khmer, then also Bulgarians and uh, Mayans, Aztecs, right? These guys kind of were kind of the main civilizations there. And we also see, as you already mentioned, Indians being picked here by Viles. He is not going for any laming shenanigans. He was using the scout to push in the deer. And then on the south side of the map, we also see Nikov here playing in the blue trunks as Khmer. And he is being very greedy as well. So is it, they're really far apart from each other too. Is it just going to be scouts opening here? Are we going to see a divergence from the Arabia 1v1 meta on the rank ladder, which is just basically <laughs> Drush men at arms? Is it actually going to be scouts again, Jordan? It could be, right? Because it feels like, especially with how fast both of them are upping, I feel like scouts is just the only thing which is going to come into my mind right now, which we will see. All right, Let's so see. neither player starting on the walls yet. Oh, no. Okay, Valesa going out, just trying to wall between the woodlines. His woodlines are actually quite nice to wall off. The only problem for him is that he's not going to have any gold behind there if he does that. So he's yep. really going to have to leave. His golds are actually... Wait, what is up with his golds? I see two there for Nikov. One of them is really safe, and the other one is a little bit far forward. But I guess Valesa is... Big time struggling for gold. Does he even have a, a third gold? <laughs> Doesn't look like that. Like he has one in the... F okay, two in the front, right? But yeah. other than that, on the side he has one. And the south side, the three gold piles are there. So, yeah, he's definitely not having too many gold piles around him, I would say. But it, it's it's equal, right? Like Nikov has uh, the th three golds as well. So, mm -hmm. no... No problem there, I suppose. Nikov reaching Fuel Age faster. So he will be able to get a lot of damage done on Vilesa's scout. And yeah, that's a slight advantage for Nikov, right? And Nikov going for stable right away. And that's usually a lovely thing for Khmer, right? They don't require the barrack 
to be able to build the stable. So the scout rush is very smooth. Also allows them to up a bit faster because you don't need the wood for the barrack there. And what you usually do with Khmer is you try to get the scouts out as soon as possible. But you have to care to be careful at wall in time, not allowing your opponent to enter your base with scouts and pikes yeah. because or spears because that's something you cannot combat. It's kind of a trap with yeah. Khmer yeah. to go just for the stable or just for the archer range without the barracks because then if you're panicking <laughs> it's gonna take you time yeah. to get spears on the field i really like the way valessa's walling here around yeah. that gold so he's immediately yeah. identified that and uh, yeah. he's gonna finish up the wall on the left hand side and he should be pretty safe and i think indians against Kamur, you probably want to play this a little bit more passively because um your castle age feels a little bit better than them so if you can take no damage getting into castle age you should have the advantage yeah, it's a general a very interesting uh, matchup, right? Because I feel like both civilizations are very close in terms of strength. Um, like oh, Indians are... Sorry, what? Oh, sorry, I was talking. Oh, sorry, uh, I was, oh, I house, was house. chatting privately with Nikos <laughs> Villager. I'm sorry, Jiren, I'm cheating on you. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, I, I deserve that after stealing your idea, Dave. All good, all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but nice, nice save for uh, Nikos here. And yeah, they're just playing around with the scouts right now. Nothing too drastically going to happen, I think. But Viles is reinforcing the army with two additional scouts. And that forces Nikov to retreat because four against three, that's never going to be a good uh, trade here. And I think Viles is going to send spearmen forward too. At least he's got one of them as he's trying to complete the walls. As yeah. soon as these spearmen show up too, suddenly Nikov can't take any of these fights. He's going to have to make sure he's fully walled, like you said. And the walls are going to be down for him. So both players will yep. now just kind of wander around, realizing there's no holes, get full map vision, and try to make their way to Castle Age as soon it, as they can. Exactly. And that's that's the reason why it's so important to get the walls in time, right? With as, Especially as the Khmer player. And I would be uh, thinking that Nikov will be up to Castle Age a bit faster, right? Like the Khmer mm -hmm. farming bonus is just so lovely. And uh, yeah, not also requiring the additional military or the buildings allows them usually to go up faster. But then, as you said, Dave, and I agree with you on that one, I prefer Indians here in Castle Age due to the fact that they can have a nice combination out of CA and uh, add anything to that, to that army composition, right? Especially on a map like this where you're really trying to control the middle and like mm. find areas to expand especially with your wood lines you're fine yep. if they're going camels and you're fully walled up booming yeah but as soon as they add some range units siege or ca then your wood lines are super exposed exactly you have to kind of get the momentum in your hands do you think like a a forward position with Khmer would work here or do you just go into like a more defensive style i like the idea of forwarding the siege workshop for example so what you're uh, what we likely are going to see from Nikov is uh, two stable play, knight play, and then go for a siege workshop forward. Great trade by Nikov here, by the way, picking off the remaining scouts from Viles. And yeah, as 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 I'm uh, said, right, like you have two stables producing knights, and then the siege workshop forward, and then put on the pressure. And if uh, Viles was to go for archer ranges and CA. It would not be ideal. But I think by the way how Viles is playing this, this kind of tells me that he is going more toward the camel situation. Mm -hmm. Also, doesn't really like... That gold is super exposed at the front. Yeah. If he ever gets kicked off of that, going CA is going to be extremely difficult. Yeah. You almost want the camels just to prevent the forward from yeah. coming, and then maybe you can switch into CA if you need to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially when your opponent is going for pikemen. That's the moment where you have to realize, okay, this is now the moment where I have to switch to CA. Uh, we indeed now see Nikov building the second stable and we also see that Viles is completely on top of that. So he gets the confirmation right away and that leads him to go for a second stable himself as well. So we will see camels against knights. And Dave, I don't think that's the best trade for the knight player. And... Oh, Nikov actually lost his scouts too. And Valesa would probably go into monks as well. So Nikov's actually 
making an extra scout probably to get himself some vision but also to help yep. snipe the monks um yep. if Valesa is going to add those behind the camels so that was yep. good from Valesa to kill those but also yep. great from Nikov to add that in the transition period a lot of players sure. wouldn't do that exactly and it's so crucial this move here is so crucial because you have the possibility to then see what your opponent is going for right and if uh, he's doing something weird like uh, going forward then you have uh, the knowledge there and knowledge is so important in these kind of situations um 35 villagers against 32 however nikov doesn't have willborough viles does so i would say viles has a slightly better economy compared to nikov here and yeah both are just waiting until they're getting castlage like they're neck and neck in this one dave this used to be like, we used to see scout v scout with walls a lot. Yeah. And it's actually kind of refreshing to see it again. <laughs> I'm so tired of watching two militia run across the field, dude. <laughs> really? Is it bothering so much already? Yeah. Well, I cast oh. a lot of T90 games and it's literally all he does. <laughs> really? Oh. Okay, so two men at arm, uh, two militia into either men at arms or into archers right away. Right, it's right? either it's either two militia into archers mm -hmm. or it's three men at arms into archers. Yeah, yeah, it's always the same, right? <laughs> Scout play is yeah. not gonna happen. No. No. Anyway, second TC from Valesa. No second TC already from Nikov. He's gonna go no. a little bit heavier on military production, and he yep. already has the monastery. Yep. Valesa though, making camels right now, getting husbandry. And he's trying to take out these scouts immediately, and he'll yeah. likely add a monastery as soon as he sees the knights here. Yeah, yeah, he will. I'm kind of surprised that he has not done that yet. A camel is taking some damage as well. And yeah, these camels are going to be able to keep those knights away. And the great thing for him right now is a great timing regarding the husbandry. He will be able to chase down those knights mm -hmm. and uh, get some extra damage here. But the monk is going to be coming in there as well for the rescue he killed all the scouts yeah he killed exactly. all of the scouts that's actually like they're the weakest <sighs> unit on the field right now but yeah so good against the monks yeah and valesa going for oh! a tc way over on the left side man that's he loses the camel that conversion yeah. dave i looked away stuff. i assumed it wasn't going to get converted i like, looked away to the tc it seems sometimes that they have 15 range instead of nine it's so yeah. crazy like, it's once they are, uh, you know, creating that certain bond, it feels like they never leave anymore. Except you have the 20. Monks? Like, not like the monk has bond with the unit, which it's about ah. to convert, you know? Like, bam. Another conversion. Another yeah. conversion. He's I... trying to pick off the monks and might try and get out of here. I think this is still a better fight here for Nikov. Yes, it is. It definitely mistake is mistake from Valesa. To yeah, for sure. Lose that, but he actually gets away with four camels, and yeah. he's gonna run. And Nikov does not have husbandry yet, so if yeah. Valesa didn't add a monastery before, he should add one now. Yeah. Look at how weak all those camels are, and there's the yeah. monastery right there. Yeah, and he's doing that right away, right? And now it could be a little problem for Valesa if uh, Nikov decides to engage, and he's losing one camel in the process. Yeah, that's not ideal here for, for Viles. And that's the problem if you're being too bit greedy or a bit too greedy and delaying your monastery, right? Because mm -hmm. in those kind of situations, yes, you have a bit more villagers, but yeah, it's not he's not paying the price for it. But in certain situations, this could break your neck. And Dave, as you said, the TC on the left-hand side for Viles, lovely stuff. I was surprised at the beginning when I was watching the map if people are going to do that, to expand in what that is... direction. Okay, so Nikov has actually gotten Wheelbarrow in a game and he chooses to get it with the Khmer of all six. <laughs> no, like, Dave, Nikov has played phenomenal the first two series. It's crazy. Like, he's nice. going for economy upgrades. I'm like, is, is uh, someone smurfing here? Like, Nikov is playing so much on point here. With another right, engagement monk, coming in. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Monk dropping the relic and the knights are enough to push him away. And this is just going to be build up your Castle Age army. Yeah. Get something that you can transition into a better unit in Imperial Age. And I guess the question for me revolves around the Khmer because you can get Cavalier, sure. But it yeah. feels like you're going to have to switch units at some point. Whereas the Indians... They can continue on with the camels and then they can add in maybe some cavalrychers if they need to, or maybe some hussar for raiding as well. Exactly. 
like the composition for Indian and Imperial Age is just so much better, right? You have the CA and uh, Hustler play, and especially in those kind of maps, right, where it's super open, um, where all your economy could be easily exposed to Hustle rates. It just feels like the Indians should be ahead in this regard. And Khmer, I feel like in this situation, they kind of have to play this in full castle age with a uh, knight and uh, pikeman what combination. Is Wow, was that a fight? I'm not sure if that was a fight. That was a slapdown. Well, only they, he only really created a bond with one of them. So. Yeah, <laughs> the good old bond. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, not not ideal for for Viles. and he's trailing behind in terms of army army size, um, 13 to to 20, and I think even this fight is bad for Viles here. He's just completely outnumbered, Dave. Is it gonna be pikemen here? It looks for like Vlesa? that. It looks like that. He's going for scale male armor. But he should not do that. Like, Spikeman is not the unit you are going to go for or you want to go for as the Indian player. You want to go CA and, and camels or whatever. I'm this... just wondering, like, what is he. He knows the knights are there. He has monks and camels, which should be, and he's fully walled, which should be able to deal with that. Yeah. Usually, right now, you would want to tech into units that would start to counter the late game composition of your enemy. Yep. And pikemen are not doing the can anything that the camels aren't. Exactly. Maybe he's concerned about gold access. I mean, I it gold access might be a gold issue. Yeah, as he that's goes a good another point. TC on the gold to the north. Yeah, that's a good point, Dave. It must be the gold issue. That's the only reason why, or the the only explanation for that, right? And now Nikov is going forward with the siege brick shop mm -hmm. after he has gotten the map control, and I absolutely love that move, right? So Nikov is playing very methodic, methodical. And let's see, we will see another engagement here, and that one should be good for Nikov again. Yep, monks sitting right inside the knights too. The camels can't target those, so that's two bonds formed. Oh. But there's four monks here from Valesa as he oh. targets all the different knights there, and he's yeah. gonna get three of his own potentially. Yeah, but he's Not losing enough. everything. He's losing everything, Dave. Complete domination here by Nikov. Completely overrunning. Eight army against twenty-four. And he gets he gets. What, scale mail armor, forging, and iron casting before he even creates a single pikeman? Yep. Yep. What? Yep. Yeah, I feel like Viles uh, has not played that one too smoothly here. And just the sheer numbers here, and especially Nikov, he has already the sea, uh, the, the scorpions available on the field as well. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, it's just gonna be Khmer completely overwhelming you. And we also have Nikov with a stream of villagers as well. Which were for sure going to plant a castle here. So very solid performance by Nikov, I have to say. And like, the lesson just feels like he kind of outthought himself. You know, he's getting a little bit too far ahead. Yeah. Maybe thinking about that gold issue. Maybe thinking mm -hmm. of a little, little too late game. Uh, instead of just let's win the fights. Also, he took a couple engagements. Like, did he really need to take that engagement against the knights with the camels there? Exactly. Did he really need to take the first engagement against the monks near Nikov's base? Exactly, I don't Dave. Know. Exactly. And these are the things which snowball snowball pretty pretty fast in these high level games, right? I've been in these kind of situations a couple of times in my life already, and uh, yeah, it's like when you're overcommitting, when you're taking one bad fight, especially early on. It can break your neck immediately, right? Especially on the high level, uh, players have become so good to really uh, leverage your uh, your mistakes there. I'm not sure if that is the right way to say it, Dave, but I think you know how what I'm trying to uh, say. Punish your mistakes. Punish, okay, thanks. Yeah. You can leverage mistakes, I guess, too, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. I, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes I have those moments where I feel like, okay, it's time for me to say something special. And then I yeah. kick myself. Something super intelligent. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So oh. we have Valesa playing as the Malians once again. Nikov as the Persians. Wouldn't be Nomad without a few restarts mixed in here. And yeah. Nikov actually has himself a better starting point now with gold closer to mm -hmm. him. And yep. the dock is further away from Valesa. So Valesa is going to struggle to find that. Plus yeah. he has these deer around, 
it's a pretty good start for both players, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. I think Nikov can be even happy with that uh, restart because I feel like his position is definitely better right now, especially yeah. the dock position, right? In the previous game, the dock placement was everything but ideal uh, as it was so close to the edge and also very close to Vilas's main base. And right now, it looks very equal for both players. Uh, Vilas, he is one villager ahead by the looks of it, so it seems like his start was a bit better, but yeah, it's the not... TC up. The TC up. Faster, okay. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that definitely helps, but it's not going to be a huge, huge factor. Mm -hmm. Half a villager ahead. Also, one second idle TC time for Nikov completely washed. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. How exactly. did he even take a win in this tournament? Uh, exactly. I mean, that's uh, 125 of a villager, right? Like, you cannot have things it's like disgusting. that. It's disgusting. Yeah. How can he be in the finals, man? Like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. I can definitely yeah. tell the difference already between player organized tournaments okay. and caster organized tournaments. Tell me the because difference. The, pre the previous map was completely like meta land land play, you know, players are far away, wall up and the scouts do that kind of stuff. And now this nomad generation is a big blob in the center where players start <laughs> on either side of the map. Yeah. And it's basically just like the last map, except with a ring of water on the outside. Yeah, well, but Dave, as you were the organizer of a very famous Nomad tournament this year in January, you should know that things like that, due to the random randomness of a Nomad uh, starts, that's just something that happens. It can no, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. just, I'm just pointing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just pointing out the different priorities between casters and players. You know what I mean? Because like no. as a player, you yeah. want things to be less random. You yes. Know, you want things to be a little more predictable so that you ah. get more consistent ah. gameplay. But as a caster, we want things to be as random as we can make it while also making it kind of fair. Just yeah. to get those entertaining situations. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. But you know, it feels like having Nomad in the map pool is always an important thing, right? Because yeah. people just love Nomad. Hmm. Yeah, and I remember, Dave, uh, the, the good old houseboat, which you were uh, responsible for uh, getting I, the map pool. Thank you. I yeah. love watching houseboat. Yeah, have you ever game. played it yourself? Yes. No, oh, okay. So it's you were, a shit it, show. Yeah, it's, it's a complete shit show. <laughs> I know, it's great. Like, yeah, it's like a complete shit show. I remember having a talk with you and was like saying, I like the tournament itself, but the houseboat, get the shit out of here. And it was like, Jordan, that is the map I'm responsible for. Yeah, I'll own it. <laughs> oh, I like, I like. Okay, so regarding the approaches, I think there's not too much deviation, right? If you're looking at the scouting intel, which Nikov has right now, he doesn't know anything about Vilas's position at all. And he's if looking we're... at the docks right now. Yeah, he's looking, but that's going to be a long, and long Vilesa run. Vilesa found the dock from Nikos. Yeah, so that's Vilesa, a huge and thing. And he still has, he still has a turkey left over. And he's yep. actually angling his way towards yep. Nikov's TC. So Nikov only has scouting and ideas of where Vilesa is via process of elimination. So he's yep. explored all of this shoreline to the north. And a lot of it to the east, so he's going to assume that Vlesa is at the bottom yeah, of the map. Yeah, for there. sure. For sure. I mean, uh, how, how would you say in English, uh, process of elimination, right? I think that's even the term. What I just said. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to sound a bit more professional. You okay? did. No, you, you sounded Thank you. great. You're doing fantastic, honestly. <laughs> I'm just still uh, trying uh, to get into this casting thing, you know? All right, so there's a dock forward from Vlesa. Yep. But Nikov's actually up first. He's he's up five seconds earlier, and they're going f towards the same shorefish. They're both looking oh, for a shorefish, the dock. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but that's much better for Vilas here, because he's, he's not close. paying attention. He's not paying attention. Nikov sees it. Yeah, v yeah, Nikov sees it, and you can definitely tell he paid attention to that. And I like the fact that Nikov is walling. His villager in, right? But in theory, if Viles was that villager, that means that Nikov can only have two dogs, while Viles has the option I think to build. Viles is 
better off to attack this and force the idle time. Because Nikov's going to get there with like barely a second dock up. And no yeah, third dock either. And Valesa yeah. is going for his third already. Yeah, yeah. But his uh, main dock is further apart, right? So that in theory... Oh, I like the move that Nikov uh, escaped the situation. Very nice done by him. 25 villagers against 22. Let's see. How many wood? Okay, 300 wood in the bank for Nikov, and let's not forget his persons. So he will be able to produce the fire galleys a bit faster. That's just how persons work. Oh. And the quick walls have been very successful here for Nikov. So nice start for Nikov, I would say. And due to the fact that his docks seem to be closer to each other, I feel like he should get the advantage here, Dave. Mm hmm. But the fish from Valesa are also further away than the fish from Nikov, so he has a risk of losing those, and he's probably going to have to run away with them. Still, they could shield the fire galleys as well, as Nikov just gets his third dock up. Valesa still only two fire galleys in production, so he didn't even go for a fire galley from his original dock. Mm. Yeah, two docks, uh, two fire galleys coming up now for Valesa, but... Uh... Yeah, I think he's always going to be a bit behind due to the fast production for the persons, right? Also super hard to clear up their docks once you've cleared yeah. up their Yeah, yeah. Like, it just takes forever. Yeah, 4,800, no, 3,600. What the hell? I thought 4,800. Never mind. Um, in the meanwhile, Nikov also walling himself, so he wants to be 100% committed to the water play here. And Viles, yeah, he's trying to raid the fishing boats a bit, but I feel like he's not going to be too successful here. And he's going to lose those two fire galleys. Five against two, that's not going to be the lovely thing. Well, as long as, long as he can hold the navy here from Nikov, I think he's okay. Yeah. As long as he doesn't lose outright, because he had seven fishing ships behind, and now he's going into demos. Yeah. He's actually done a good job to keep most of his fire galleys alive. As, as I say that, he loses one, but... Takes run from Jordan. Now, now he's going to pull this back to get repaired. Maybe. Oh, it dies anyway. Tragic. Yeah. <laughs> demos! Rough. Demos! Oh, demos! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Whoa. There was a huge shot. A huge one. You were That's... calling it. You were calling it, Dave. The good old demo shot. Mm -hmm. How do you like... I would be proud. He would be proud. How do you enjoy the fights between fire galleys when two are hitting at one and the one has the repair of the villager? I hate it. I hate everything to do with fire galleys. <laughs> you as well? I, I absolutely hate it as well. Like I feel like a feudal age water should only be galley and demo rest. Exactly. I do not like fire galley. I don't like any of the mechanics. No. I, I do not like it. No, no. I absolutely hate it. Like, absolutely hate it, right? Uh, Viles, in the meanwhile, he has added a barracks, so he knows that he most likely is going to lose the water here. And he will try to buy himself time now. With the demos, try to keep his fish alive as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And try, try to make something happen with, with the stable. He needs a market though, and he doesn't have the wood for a market. So if mm. he had a market, he could sell the stone and buy his way up, maybe. Yep. And something... But yeah, go ahead. Doesn't have the wood for it, and he needs that wood for the stable that he's building yep. right now. Yep. And the thing is, the huge advantage Marlins have over Persians is that they have greater monks. They have better monks, right? And... Uh, yeah, persons don't really have too many answers against that. So if we see a monk stable and siege push by Viles, that's going to be very tough for Nikov to defend against. And Viles indeed, he is going up to Castle Age already. And Nikov, he's just way far behind in that department. And also his fishing, like, Dave, has he not realized that he has not killed any fishing boats yet from Viles? I think he might just assume because he saw the three docks that Valesa went for like the standard four or five fishing ships. And it's seven instead, and they haven't been pressured at all. Yeah. To be fair though, his really haven't been pressured that much either. Yeah, exactly. Like So maybe something... he thinks it's like pretty even on the food count, but I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous. Valesa has a huge advantage here. Yeah, a huge one. And now Townwatch coming in for, for Nikov. I'm just wondering what he can do to stop the Siege Monk aggression at all. Like, I don't see anything he can do there. 
And I just love the fact what Viles is doing. He keeps on sending out the demos to try to raid fishing boats, right? Yep. And Dave and on the north side, maybe adding another dock there too. Ah, oh, mistiming here. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Did you see the Nikov was trying, was misclicking and building a fishing trap out in the Norver? No, and I didn't see that. <laughs> like. Man, it was a panic move, right? On the left-hand side, Viles has uh, built another dock, so that will guarantee him a great uh, fishing economy. And uh, that one looks very safe. And Dave, we see, indeed, Siege Workshop and Monastery. Malians help out so much here. Just saving yeah. that extra little wood on all this mm. stuff makes this push a lot more uh, viable. Yeah. And... I mean, Valesa didn't go for that market. He didn't sell his stone, so he still has 200 stone in the bank. So yep. if he gets himself a good position, as he goes for a transport ship now... I love that move. He can, he can actually uh, add TCs behind this if he th does some damage to Nika. But yeah, Knights in a transport going Whoa. into Nika's base going to be devastating. That is such a great move, Dave. That was so That's something I haven't even thought about. It will completely annihilate the wood line here uh, on the south side of, of Nikov. And the siege is definitely guaranteed to to join the fray and to be able to get inside as well. Lovely Nikov move. Nikov finally, finally searching for Valesa's fish. Yeah. He realizes they're not down on those docks. He's searching there. Nikov now going for houses uh, against the shoreline. I guess Nikov got... Town watch. He could see the transport ship coming out. Yeah. And he's just going to go for quick walls here. This is the disadvantage, I guess, of going for the transport if your opponent notices it. Yeah. Might yeah. as well have those knights over on the other side where the Mangonel is going to push through. Yeah. But it's still, I think it's still worth it because it forces so much, there. it forces so much oh. reaction. What, where's the hole? Those quick walls were filthy from Nikov. And yeah. the knights get in anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> but still, no no armor on the knights, so the TC yeah. will be able to do really good damage. Yeah. And uh, Nikov has, uh, I feel like, improved a lot in terms of quick walling. It feels like he even has assigned a new hotkey to that. Yeah. Oh, the knight is most likely going to die, isn't it? Oh. 6 HP, 6 HP, and that one can be so annoying. Okay, Spearmans are going to come out. But yeah, now now I'm just wondering, Dave, if we are going to see Redemption Monks. There's absolutely nothing Nikov can do. Nothing. And the fishing like... boat is still alive, yeah? Right? Yeah, maybe even just some water units for Valesa would be good. And he's going for a fire ship up there. Yeah. Like, I think you've done quite a bit of damage here. You just add TCs and go water. And that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. Like, you go for fire get fire ships on the other side yeah. to hunt the fish from Nikov, and then you defend your own fish at the top. Yeah. And you're always going to be at, in front in Eco. Ooh. Oh, saving the Magnal with the great quick wall here. But still, he's losing so many villagers in the process. And yeah, Dave, as you mentioned, like, very nice uh, moves here by Viles. And that's something he's... He has improved so much, I feel like, very recently, the fact that he is able to have the great balance between pushing, um, you know, making your opponent react with the push he's going for, and in the meanwhile also uh, having great economy and behind there. He is there. losing his fish, though. Yep. Nikov showed up somehow, I don't know where those fire galleys appeared from, but he's got five of them, apparently. And there's a demo ship on the way out from Valesi. He actually converts a full HP fire galley. Yeah. So he's going to buy himself a little bit of time, try and get these yeah. all bunched up, and then oh, jump out with the demo ship will, right he now. Will, he will. He will. No! Vilas, please. Vilas, please. Oh! Not enough, though. Not enough. Oh, it's 7 HP. But this that was... Uh, like, you're, yeah. you're booming behind. You're, yeah. you're laughing. You got deer yeah. to take at home. Like, you're yeah. fine. Yeah. And also on the right hand side, he cleaned up uh, two uh, fishing boats as well with the fire galley. So not too bad for Viles, I would say. Even though Nikov has the water control right now, he still seems to be in a very good position. And Nikov doing a great uh, attack move with his mangonel. Pikeman oh. coming in as well. And that mangonel is going to be dead without any exchange here. Is it going to be dead? It's going to be yep. dead. And the and knights can just heal up behind, so... Exactly. Valesa is laughing, and he's got three TCs behind this. Mm -hmm. He may not be producing at all times from the TCs, yep. but uh, he has the potential to. 
And Nikov, like you said, he has water control, but he doesn't have enough water control to feel confident in adding too many fish. He's queuing yep. up some more right now. Mm. But at any point, Valesa can just send in some fire ships over exactly. to that side and kill everything. Exactly. And that's uh, the big problem on Nomad, right? That your fish is just always going to be in risk. And uh, yeah, Vilas is doing a very smart move. Like, I feel like the way he's playing this map is just textbook, textbook Nomad play. Mm -hmm. Even killing the markets can be very annoying for Nikov. Yep. Yep. His also... eco is going to be really unbalanced. And uh, later on, that's going to come into play. Pikeman taking some shots. Nikov, he needs oh. to go like one for four with this Mangonel. Yeah. And he just lost all the Pikeman. Well, and now he brutal. loses the Mangonel. Tragic. Yeah. yeah, complete tragic. Vilas has done a great job in microing that one. And I like the move. Uh, committing to the shots here onto his knights because... Knights can sustain the shots a bit longer than the pikemen. Two of them were killed, yes, but he lost six pikemen in the process. And that was overall way worth it for Viles, I feel like. Nikov can't see that gold in the middle, by the way. He's, he uh, he's gone to stone over on the right side. Oh, that hurts, yeah. And I think that's because his main gold is being cut off and he's thinking about selling stone for gold, potentially. Mm. Yep. But he can't see the one in the middle. He's going out with an outpost now. Yep, yep. Yeah, he will uh, be able to get the information here. Um, the Mangonel Micro of Nikov is superb, right? It's just something like... He's... I feel like he's one of the top three in terms of Mangonel Micro. Uh, with MBL and Lyri most likely. And... Yeah, let's see. Um, you know, even if he has only one, it's always going to be dangerous to engage into that. You wouldn't put doubt in that list? Uh, he's, uh, you know, top four. You mean, your micro doesn't get better if you shout micro while doing it? <laughs> Imagine, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just another level, you know, Dave. Just another yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Innovator. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at it. Like, one mangonel pushing four mangonels back. Yeah, for a limited, limited time. Yeah. Limited time. Don't bounce up against the stone. Oh god. Oh. Okay, close enough. And redemption's on the way. And look at yep. Valesa's resources, like, looking really good. Capture yep. age tells us the eco is similar, but most yeah. of that is fishing ships, or yep. eight fishing ships mm. for um, Nikov, as he goes for a TC on that gold in the middle. Yep. And the army for Valesa seems unstoppable at the moment. Yep. It looks like, right? And especially now with the redemption monks coming in for Valesa. I feel like you as the Persian player in those kind of situations where the economy is just not like fully going on yet, it just feels like a checkmate situation because you don't really have a counter to that. Your monks are not that great and uh, you cannot really stop the Magnus from pushing forward, I feel like. First Nikov gets Wheelbarrow as Khmer and then Nikov gets Wheelbarrow on Nomad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, like he, he's a uh, changed man. Yeah, he has definitely changed 100%. And now he also shows Nikov that he indeed has uh, redemption, right? Because he's converting the the barrack here, um, and Nikov is just panicking with the TCs here, trying to build another TC for safety reasons. But oh boy, Dave, this is not looking too healthy for uh, Nikov right now. No. And usually you don't want to convert pikemen, but Nikov <laughs> has nothing else to convert. So exactly. Exactly. Valesa is perfectly happy converting those. He's just going to take all the momentum away. He actually might get this Mangonel with the Monk. Oh, he that sucks. Time he does, yeah. but yeah. he still loses it. Still, that's Nikov's yeah. only form of defense. Yeah. Persian TCs are tough to take down, sure. Yeah. But uh, when you have no military to counter the Mangonels whatsoever, and there's four of them, it's mm. going to be a bad time. Exactly, it's going to be a bad time, and also Vilas has enough stone to build a castle forward as well. G to the G! Nikov is forced to tap out of this one, which means we are going to ga go into game number three with an equalized score. We've got Nikov against Valesa. This is Nikov's home map. He's gone for the Poles, and Valesa has gone for the Vietnamese. The Poles are a very good arena sieve, but I don't think the Vietnamese are their best matchup. So, could be interesting. 
It's going to be a very interesting one. I have never seen this matchup on Arena, if I recall properly. I mean, Paul's a great, great booming Sith, right? With the yeah. with the uh, possibility to go for the Fallworks, which speed up your food income so drastically. It's just, it's just a lovely thing to boom with, right? Uh, on the other side, Vietnamese, they are extremely strong, especially against Archer Sifts. Paul's not the typical Archer Sif, yes, but, uh, you know, the Vietnamese, you never do something wrong, I feel like. They are the typical in-between civilization, between the very best civilizations and the and the worst ones, so, yeah, very solid. They have a lot of uh, things going for them. Were you around when they were by far the worst civilization? But what happened? I think their economical uh, boost was not there, right? It With was, the... Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. there. And, and, and dude, yeah. Nikov cannot bring in this boar. Oh my god! And now he's gonna get how he has to build the house with the boar villager. Oh god! It went back twice. Or did oh he fall? no, no way! Really? I like on Absolutely arena, and I, I, I never pay attention to that anymore because, like, yeah, it's like what happens in, in Dark Age anyway, right? On arena, mm -hmm. it's more about chilling. You know, I think Dave upon this. It makes sense to discuss what we had uh, a second ago about the dating stuff. Did you have okay. that experience? That in the past what? you were, you know, on the phone with a girl, let's say? That's what I was saying. That it, like, yeah. especially like high school, like when you were younger. Okay, so it, it is, yeah. It was the like, no, you hang up, no, you hang up kind of thing. Okay, you know? so it was the same thing over there. It's. I think it's the same everywhere, bro. Really? Think I don't so? think it's a cultural thing. I think it's okay. literally anyone with a phone. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, like nowadays it would be it would be texting, right? Like yeah. who's gonna send the last text? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And oh. like back in the day, you know, because you're you're around around my advanced age, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, you would oftentimes use your family members as an excuse if you had like the family phone. Uh, yeah. 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 You know, oh. to like, oh, one of them has to use it. But then yeah. when cell phones yeah. came along, oh, you got screwed. You got screwed hard. <laughs> My battery is going off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know these uh, these tricks. No, but it's just so lovely, right? Now, now when you're thinking back in time, it's just so sweet if you go through that phase, right? Mm. Was it? I, don't I know, think my so. My teenage years were a little bit weird. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Why <Well>, exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone's teenage years were a little bit weird, dude. Yeah, okay. Do you ever like yeah. remember back to being a teenager and just cringe at all the dumb things that you did? Nonstop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nonstop. Right. It's just like so many things you didn't know back then, but know now, and that would have helped you so much in life. It's just insane. But yeah. Okay. Yep. There were a couple of things which were fun, for sure. Mm. How often did you have that experience, Dave? With the woman? Which experience? Yeah, uh, to, uh, to be the last one to hang up. Middle school, girlfriend, every phone call. And then... <laughs> high school, first girlfriend, like every other phone call. And then it kind of died off after that, because like you get older and like, you know... Yeah. Not that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at one point you're reaching an age where it's just like, yeah, I don't I don't give a shit, right? Yeah, yeah. But that, <laughs> it's like, that, I'm gonna hang up now. <laughs> yeah, no, I will. I will. I'll be the first one, right? I wonder yeah. what happens, when does it happen, right? That that switch between I'm I'm going to be the loser if I hang up first to I'm going to be the the victor if I'm going to uh, hang up first. I went I wonder when that switch is coming. I think it depends on the person, maybe. Yeah, I don't of know. course. Is there yeah. like a build for it? Does it have a build order? Like 20 years like at least. After your like... 15th on gold, <laughs> then you go and switch to something else, maybe? <laughs> yeah, it's maybe clear it's not working. Yeah, maybe maybe it hasn't been figured out yet. Yeah. All right. Okay, Dave, we are 10 minutes into the game almost, and we have breached Dark Age already. So that that's good, that's good. This is why I like arena casting, you know? You can just like chat about stuff. You can kind of warm up. Yeah, for sure. And Nikov is going for a barracks, so he's not going the market blacksmith approach. And he's on stone right now. And of course with the poles, that's very, very nice because you get the gold income as well, which is beautiful. That's like, 
such a strong bonus. It's insane. Yeah, I feel like it's still underused. Uh, yeah. There are certain players, like for example, Winchester, where I would say they have really already optimized their builds to toward poles, right? The way he is using um, poles is just phenomenal. I remember having practice games against him on on uh, King of the Desert, and it felt like he always won with poles. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, while, for example, I, I don't have too much, you know, good plays with poles yet. So there's definitely room for improvement. And yeah, Nikov, he is not going on gold. He is going on stone. And I like the move a lot because he's getting the 50% of the stone, uh, stone income is going to be, uh, in addition to that, also gold. So yeah, not too bad there. But he has to buy like himself... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying he has to buy himself the gold though to go up. Yeah, yeah, because he didn't quite have enough. And there we go. He sells some stone for gold, which he yeah. was gathering anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah. giving him gold in more than one way. Yeah. yeah. I was. I think like the bonus for it. Everyone always thinks about civ bonuses in relation to like Arabia, right? Because that's the most played map. Yeah. But it applies so much more in maps like Nomad, Mega, Mega Random, especially having pulls mm. is super nice. Because yep. you never know how much gold you're going to get, right? Yeah. Or, you know, water maps, even. I mean, poles aren't traditionally the best water map sieve, but if you have limited amounts of gold on, like, Team Islands, getting that extra gold from the stone is really important. Yes, and Just yes. Kind of stranger off meta maps that we see. It seems very, very strong to me. Yep, for sure. And I feel like also poles is the one civilization which is by far not the most figured out yet right there's still a mm -hmm. lot of room uh, for improvement and that's just because this civilization is just working way different compared to the other civilizations it's i, I kind of compared a bit to malay with their fast uptime i it's, think malay is still less figured out like honestly it's been so long and really? it feels like they're still so strong like and people yeah i see builds like when i'm casting players with malay all the time yeah. i see builds where they just underestimate the the time it takes to get up to the next stage, and they're not ready. Once yeah, they yeah, get there, right? yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, it's just if you do the mistake to go to the next age a bit too early, that would give you a huge weakness because you will not be able to afford anything upon reaching mm -hmm. the next age, right? But okay, anyway, uh, both players are going for the pure arena meta, which means going for light calf and. Yeah, trying to get the relics, but Nikov having a very bad fight here, taking a lot of damage on that scout. And yeah, he's going for heavy plow as well, so he will be able to boost his food income really, really fast. Nikov went for the monastery early, and Valesa went for the TC and then the monastery. So Nikov's yep. first monk is going to be a little bit quicker. Yep. And he should be able to snag probably two relics safely. It's going to be that third one that's going to be the issue. I can't see either player getting four here. Unless no. Nikov goes like super heavy on light cap. But even then, Valesa should be able to snag one. And the light cap is already coming in for Valesa. Yep, yep. Nikov, he doesn't really have the gold so far yet. But he's going to go for that now, I suppose, right? Let's see, he doesn't go for that yet, but he doesn't produce any scouts, so yeah, Light Calf coming in, indeed. And yeah, as you said, Monastery is out a bit earlier than Viles, so he will be able to get some relics uh, in before Viles. And Nikov, he's also adding a second TT, so we can expect some booming behind from both players as well. That's all I got, Jordan. Yeah, me as well. <laughs> I was hoping like, okay, Dave, please take over. Please save me right now. <laughs> no, what do you what do you do? What do you do with Poles late game against Vietnamese? That's hmm. where they struggle, right? Once you get into the late yeah. game composition. It seems I... like they have the advantage early. Yep. I think uh... what you have to do is you have two options. You go either for on uh, on for cavalry. Or you go for Arbalest, right? Both directions could be completely bad, depending if Vilesse scouts it. But you have to... Oh yeah, Obuch. Uh, but Obuch doesn't work at all for uh, for um, against rage units, right? So that's not really yeah. going to be the play. 
Um, I feel like you have to go for very fast imp. Forward castle. Trap. Trap the Vietnamese player down. And then commit to either cavalry or arbalist. Yeah, it feels like Poles really have to take the initiative here. Yes, for If sure. you let the Vietnamese sit, it's you're going to have a bad time. Yep. And both players losing a monk now. We got Spearman on the field for Valesa, and that's the big difference right now. But Nikov taking some better engagements early with the light cav. Yep. Still, the Spearmen are on the hunt, and Nikov has gotten two relics. Valesa has gotten one, one. relic. Is mm. going to grab the second one with the Spearman there. Yep. And it's all about that third one, I think, on the left-hand side. As we see Nikov now switching over to that side yep. to go grab that again. Yeah. It feels like both of them guarantee will have two relics for sure. And now the question is uh, what the transition is going to be like and who's going to be able to get the third relic. But Dave, it looks like it should be the uh, Viles, right? Because he's just having it much closer to his base there. And in the meanwhile, look at that. Nikov still hasn't added 30 C. Oh no, never mind, never mind, never mind. He has added a 30 C. So he is going for a big boom behind that as well. And he's still on, he's sending more to stone. Now, that's not likely for the gold income. Probably thinking about a castle relatively early. Mm. Do you go for that 4 TC first or do you go for the castle? If you're gonna make it forward, you probably go for the castle first. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to. Like, I would be very surprised if Nikov decides to add even a, a fourth TC here, right? And Vilas getting the light calf. He lost the monk, but he got the conversion on the light calf. And now he's gonna get both the relics. Yeah. Yeah, he he has both of them now, and that gives him a nice advantage as well in terms of the relic department. He but, didn't you know, even get yeah. heavy plow. I'm surprised. Obviously, Nikov has it mm. for the poles to yeah. get the full advantage, but yeah. it's cheaper for Vilesa, so it's. Yep. Interesting to me that he's adding so many farms now Yeah. without actually getting that. He's got 30 farms uh, mm. without Heavy Plow. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Uh, especially the only thing he has to invest into that is food, right? And it feels like he has good amount of food now with the 30 farms. So it's definitely something he wants to get as soon as possible. Um, but yeah, like, I wonder, Dave, what is v Nikov's long-term game plan here? He has a good amount of villagers, yes, a uh, bit of uh, head in that department, yes, but 4TC against 3TC, and it doesn't look like... Okay, he's going for university now, so, so I feel like he is going to go for Imperial Age very soon, and then he needs to make something happen here. Well, that's a banking up quite a bit of gold, though, and he's got 31 on farms. Like, that's 32 mm. farms, 30 more farms coming down for Valesa. 34, so yeah. At any point, he can kind of just stall a villager. He's got eight villagers queued. As mm. long as he has the castle age buildings, he can probably click up pretty soon. He's going for a castle. Yep. He's banking up the stone right now. So, Nikov making no moves to come forward yet. Should probably put his castle at home, and then Valesa puts his castle at home. And I think this is kind of playing into Valesa's hands a little bit. 100%. I, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, what is his game plan from Nikov? Nikov has clicked up, so he will be uh, going up now. But yeah, now what's, the, what's his follow-up plan? That's the main question. Valesa needs a second building and then just uncue some villagers mm. and you can go up to the next stage. Yeah, yeah. He's waiting for the castle though. This might be a trap for Valesa. I think you should make the second building now. Okay, he's making the siege workshop. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to wait for that castle to click up to the next stage. Yeah. I'm wondering. He is adding archer range, Dave. Archer range for Nikov. Okay. And he is sending a lot of villagers forward now. So he already has Loom as well in the in the queue. So he wants to make something happen here. And indeed he needs to make something happen. What do you What do you do against Imp Skirm Halb for Vietnamese? Uh, if you're poles. You have to go for Onigers, but Onigers are going to die against BBC. It's just like everything the poles can do is going to be countered by by Vietnamese. How did the Obuk, Obuk do well against that? But then you can just add in some archers of your own. Yep. And Imp Skirm, I think, actually probably don't do that terribly against Obuk. Uh, what is the damage output? Eight, right? Or nine? Um, It's four. It should be nine. 
Four? It, oh no, is it eight? Five plus four? Oh, eight. It's eight. Okay. It's kind of a nut. It's like a nutty unit, dude. It's it's kind of crazy, <laughs> honestly. And if like you get if you get it with uh, if you're like Aztecs, yep, with their skirm bonus, it can be kind of nuts. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's it's strong. It's strong. <clears throat> I love the move from Veles. He's building a outpost in the front. He wants to get the confirmation what his opponent is going for. But Nikov doesn't really allow him to do that. And Nikov is going for scrims now. This does not feel like a good move, Dave. Like, we were just talking about it. Vietnamese just go for Imperial scrims and they're mm -hmm. good. Right? Conscription coming in, gold shaft mining. Uh, maybe a combination out of Obuch and Skirms could be a play for Nikov, but then again, nothing I have in my mind right now where Vietnamese could struggle against Poles. Now Nikov's looping around the right side. Let's see, looking. Oh, he's just looking for the light cap. Please don't tell me he loses a monk here. Oh my god. He loses no. both. No, he loses no. both. <laughs> no, tragedy. Both. Yeah, that was a very valuable uh, scout, I would say. And you know what surprises me? That Viles was not that slower, or that not that much slower to Imperial Age than his mm -hmm. opponent, right? I felt, I thought it was going to be way, way uh, slower there. So nicely done by him. And he's going for Retin Arches here. And Retin, Retin Arches is just such a very strong, very powerful unit here. Okay, how well do Obuk do against this? Not well at all. Even I wonder no. what their Pierce armor is on the elite version, though. It should be two plus four. Because they've got two base. Uh, three plus four. On uh, the non-elite. Yeah. Elite. So I don't yeah. know what the base is on the uh, elite version. I guess it was. It's still two, right? Six I have, max. Yeah, I so think it's six it'd max. Yeah. Still be two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I have in mind that they don't have the, or they're not the strongest against range units. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 111 villages against 110, so very, very equal. <laughs> or um, almost identical. But Nikov doesn't have Wilbur uh, handcard yet. And I suppose Vilas is going to go for Bomber Cannons. And with the Bomber Cannons and Retin Archers, I just see Nikov struggling a lot against that. Nikov doesn't have any armor. No, never mind. He has armor. Yeah, he's fine. But it's not like Dave. It's not like the Red Arches are trading bad against the Skirms at all. No, it's no, totally no, fine. no. And especially once you get like Elite and all the upgrades, they're gonna be yep. super sick. And we see Elite upgrade coming in there. Seven yep. plus four attack. Yep. For these bad boys, eight range yep. on them and eight Pierce armor. Skirms exactly. do do bonus damage, but. Yeah, it's when it's gonna be really, really tough to kill that ball of rat nurtures. When they are uh rat archers, like elite, they are going to have ten pierce armor. Which is just like crazy, right? They're kind of like huskals, so to say. I just I question. I wanna see something from Nikov that makes me not question what he's doing. <laughs> what he's done all game. <laughs> because he's falling back with skirmishers now. He's got mm. bombard cannons of his own. The Ratten yeah. Archers and the Bombard Cannons from Valesa are just destroying his army currently, and he's trying to go for a panic castle here. Yep. The bodies of his skirmishers, the skirmishers are buying him time, but is it enough time to get this up? And what does he do once it is up? <laughs> I love I love that uh way of uh, thinking you had during the things you said just right now <laughs> what happens if the castle is going to go up anyway <laughs> it, it like i i still have questions and now he's taking he's taking into the cavalry armor yeah so he's got what one stable yeah. right now one stable mm. he's gonna build stables maybe over on the right side and try and expand but look at the line of castles from valesa he's like okay that's fine I think my composition beats your composition. I'm going to play it yeah. safe with my castles, not pressure you, take control of the resources, and slowly build up my army. Yeah, and does... Look at that <laughs> Red Archer over on the right side. Oh, that's so good from Valesa. Yep. Yep. He, it feels like he is uh, 
you know, in the driver's seat in this game. And, you know, I understand it, like, Nikov, he has a very hard time to fight against Vietnamese in Imperial Age, and I feel like he needed to go for a different approach. You know, with Pulse, there's a lot of things you can do there, especially with, like, 1TC plays. Yeah, that, that would have been better, I guess, than uh, just going into a straight Imperial Age fight against Vietnamese here. And I love how Valesa is just getting all the text just in case. He can yeah. build up mm. Rat Narches. He's teching into Halb now. He's not even adding any Halb. He's just teching into it. Because yeah. he knows the cavalry switch might be coming. He hasn't exactly. even seen any stables. Exactly. And he's getting uh, Siege Engineers as well. Nikov spending all his stone to repair that castle. And the Rat Narchers sitting under the castle. Getting targeted by the Skirmishers casually. Tanking yeah. all that damage and wiping yeah. up all the Skirms from Nikov. Yeah. Yeah, this is just, uh, I would say, a point of no return, right? And like, Nikov has 28 villages repairing the castle, repaired that castle, and everything is going to go idle now, and indeed, Viles is able to win game number three. It was the home map of Nikov, but he was falling short, and Viles is sitting on a 2-1 lead right now, and will have the match point for the last or the fourth game. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Tatars and Sicilians. Interesting, he went for Tatars here, so you thought he was going to save that for the last match. Yeah, I guess it's going to be Brits then, huh? That also, also makes sense. Huh, Dave, I would suggest you go for the introduction again. You do it better than me, so, you know, I, I want the quality there. All right, so we have Nikov versus Valesa. Game number four here. It's on Arabia. Nikov's gone for the Tatars. And look at this Arabia generation. Hills everywhere, which is going to help mm. him. And Valesa has gone for the Sicilians, which we saw were so devastating uh, in King of the Desert. And you get to a point with Sicilians where it just feels like there's nothing you could do against them if they manage to tech up. It's just yep. whether they manage to get there. That's the question. Ex exactly, exactly. And the Sicilians, for me personally, is one of the Sifs which I absolutely love because they have so many great things to them, which make them so strong, right? But certain mm -hmm. civilizations can really exploit uh, the way Sicilians work. And usually the best way to approach the game against Sicilians is you don't ever want to go for trash units. You always mm -hmm. want to have the combination, combination out of gold units, right? Ideally, you have knights and crossbows. That's uh, something Sicilians really struggle against. Yeah. Because you're not doing any bonus damage there. Exactly. Just doing standard damage. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Valesta saw the barracks. He didn't see the militia coming up. But if the barracks is up this early, it must you better be. believe that there's militia there. And he he's not tracking them across. Oh. So, he's probably just going to start thinking about little walls around his wood lines and whatever. And Nikov can't find him. Oh, he's going the wrong direction. Nikov! And, he, and he scouted the stone. Okay, now he knows. Now he. Yeah. Well, does he? Yeah, it's okay. It's he not does. the worst yeah, thing yeah. in the world. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fine. little bit off. Yeah. But still, it's going to delay him getting to the wood line. And maybe yeah. Valesa at this point starts asking questions like, wait, where is the drush? Yeah. I saw the barracks. I saw the. The wood line, and that makes him even more confident to come out here to this wood line because yeah. he didn't see anything. And Nikov's going to deny that, but still, Valesa will save all this stuff. He has yeah. wood line at the back. Exactly. He will save it all, and uh, he was just going to quickly quick wall everything, right? And he will be completely fine here. There's nothing Nikov can do right now. And Nikov going for big walls here in the, the south side of his base. But he's also going for Loom, so I would imagine that his fuel age time is not going to be too much delayed there. And the scout just being super annoying, right? And if Viles is not able to get these walls up, then Nikov can do some damage here. And it looks like he's going to be able to do that. It's tough because it's on a hill, but he should be able to get it up. Oh, oh! Nikov, perfect timing on the scout. Well played yeah. by him. And the militia yeah. are in attacking the villager down yeah. the hill. Yeah. Oh, but great reaction by Viles. Great stuff. And he's able to fight so well with his villagers. He's going to well, lose one for sure, though. Yeah, he might even lose yeah. the second one here. He's going to lose the second one, I think. No. No, he's not. He's not paying yep. attention. And it's down. Go! It's down. Run! It's Run! down. Oh, oh, the nice. Blocks. Nice, 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 nice. Crazy. Really well done by Viles here, salvaging the situation. But I would say, Dave, that was better for Nikov because he was yeah, able yeah. to get so much uh, value from those militia and he was even able to get one villager killer, which is just 
lovely. Right? Yeah. A lot of people think, like, uh, especially people that are newer to the Drush build order, that you need to kill a villager to make sure it's valuable. <clears throat> yep. But killing a villager is just a perk. That's actually kind of rare in terms of a Drush. It's less than 50% of the time. And he all he made him idle, yep. his economy. He held him at home at the beginning, yep. canceled that second lumber camp, and killed the villager. So very successful Drush there. Exactly. Exactly. I mean... In general, if you're getting even villager kills, that's even much more than you're asking for anyway, right? Because on a high level, you usually never see someone losing villagers to a Drush, except it's coming completely out uh, out of uh, as the a blue. surprise, out of the blue, thank you. Um, which was not really the case, so I was surprised that the Villas lost a villager there, but I guess Nikov has utilized his scout very nicely to prevent that. The hills were also kind of weird on the wood line for the quick walls and stuff is mm. a little bit tricky yeah, for Valesa yeah. to make that quick wall happen. Exactly. Viper would have done it, but... Yeah, but most likely the only one who would be able to do it was the Viper. But okay, both players are going for uh, Archers right now. We have one village elite for um, Nikov here. And yeah, I mean, Archer-wise, Viles has the slight advantage here, but Tatar's Archers, you know, they, they're fine. They will always be able on those kind of maps have uh, high ground. And uh, yeah, once reaching Castle Age, that's going to be very dangerous because they get the thumb ring for free. Nikov's got a good little base set up here too. He's got that wood yeah. in the back that can't be ranged. And yeah. he's got the gold that can't be ranged too. Exactly. So the question for me is just, can he set up his farm safely? Answer is yes. Can Does he have wood safe for a long time? Answer is yes. And I think Nikov... Yeah is going to play this pretty defensively, just sitting on top of this hill and getting his nice little Tatar hill damage on there. And he can continue to take the berries too. So this is looking quite nice for him. Yeah, but this engagement could in theory be good for Viles. Like he's able to try it with one archer. So um, one archer going down for both sides here. And he's also getting some extra. No, he's not going to get extra damage. And... For me personally, one of the most important things I always look at when someone is utilizing Sicilians is... Oh, look at that gate! Yeah, nice, nice move by Nikov. Look at that. But what is he doing? Okay, now the scout is dead. That one is biting the dust. Viles has gone for horse color already, Dave. And that means his farms are going to have 350 food, if I'm not mistaken. 25. 325, okay. You know stuff, Dave, you know stuff. No, I clicked the, f I clicked the uh. farm, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know stuff! He knows how to read? What a nerd! <laughs> this guy, that's exactly why I'm co-casting with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. I was like, man, how does he know those kind of small details? He must be the best controller player ever. No, I'm, dude, I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, if you ask well. me how much a unit costs, like, I don't even... Unless how... it's one of the major ones, I don't know. How much does know. a knight cost? Uh, 50 food, 75 gold, I think. Oh, God. 60 food, Dave. Oh, well, fuck it. And then, last try. I just, last try. I just know if, if the game makes the, you know... Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like, has the icon once I click, yeah. build it. Yeah. And last like question. I, said, I don't I don't know. How does a, a champion cost? How much? Before or after supplies. Not that it makes a difference because I don't fucking know. <laughs> then let's go for after. No, just kidding. Uh, before. I Dude, honestly. Is it like 60 food? 20? Is that the final answer you're going to submit? I don't know, dude. Like I said, I don't know the cost of any units. I've been <laughs> playing the game for so long. If okay. I have enough, okay. I'll click it and it'll ma I'll make it. <laughs> what is the villager cost? Oh, 50 food. Yo, yes, fuck. yes, you got it. <laughs> oh, well, I just the, proved the you is, wrong. Like, right? Yeah, the thing is, like, I've never, ever looked at a precise build order. I've just always, like, winged it. I know the yep. general beginning. Yep. I just always wing it. So. Yeah, I always wing as well. I don't know costs. But anyway, this is playing out exactly like we thought it would. Nikov is just playing very defensively. He has yeah. snuck archers away, though. He's done the classic delete the wall and sneak archers away. And he's going to show up at Valesa's base. But Valesa will have double archer range to defend. And Valesa has gone for the gigantic walls. Dave, 
In my opinion, there is a huge misplay by Nikov. Do you know what it is? Uh, huge misplay by Nikov. Yeah. No horse color. Typical no. Nikov play. No. no, no, it's it has to do something with his uh, arches. He snuck out. Should he wait until he has crossbow? No. Nope. Then engage. J like, just what, what you... just imagine Velasquez's position. He leaves this pos position and then comes back, and instead of a wall, there's a house which is unfinished. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. But I, right? I thought about that, but I wasn't sure if that house had been built as a panic measure. Once <laughs> man, you, the wall. You're, you're not focused, man. You're not focused. I know, I'm not. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the misplay, right? In, in that situation, you built the wall again, so no one knows what happened. I feel but like okay, I was Dave, getting it's... quizzed there, like I was in school or something. Yeah, like, Find yeah, the difference in this picture. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> if Nikov leaves his base at 19 minutes <laughs> and the less leaves his base at 1848 and they're going at 0.75 speed, where will they meet up? It's like, I don't, I don't know. When is, when, when is Nikov able to catch up again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, so so you're having those kind of questions asked in school yeah, as well? Of course, it's not, it's and not, it's, and it's a, it's not a German too. thing. Okay, it's not yeah, a German thing. Yeah, it's a thing. meme here too. Yeah, yeah. Like, wow. when will this ever be useful? Yeah, <laughs> no? like get the shit out of here, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <sighs> okay, we have an engagement Tatar on the hill, never good, and also they have thumb ring now, right? But yep. it feels like Vilas has the army size, right? But oh, no, but this... Nikov's just focusing the archers. He's ignoring the skirms for now. Yeah, but I'm, and he's I'm... still got the cro He's got the archers at the back. He waited till crossbow Jordan. Oh baby, yep. please just sneak up on that wood line. Get right beside, snuggle right up to that house. Yep. I'm, I zoomed in too much, but yeah, he's snuggling. He's snuggling. He's trying to snuggle, right? But the snuggling mm -hmm. is only, uh, you know, it's giving more like him a one cuddling religion. at the moment. Yeah. Man, like they're they're being very aggressive with their shots here. Yeah. But it feels like Nikov definitely has a huge advantage here. He has uh, five villagers more, okay. He doesn't have wheelbarrow, but overall, two villager lead, roughly, I would say, is definitely healthy. Elite skirm now, though, for Valesa. So Nikov is on N plus two armor. So Nikov yep. can only make these crossbows for so long. And a lot of those crossbows are weak, too. He needs to be yes. very careful. He's still yes. micring against this. Yeah. But this is elite skirm with plus two now. Like this yes. is very dangerous. Yes, yes. I don't like that the Vilas is staying so long in the lower ground. Doesn't make any sense. And the north side is going to be cleaned up by Vilas now again. The good thing is for Nikov he forced Vilas to move the wood line, right? Which means he had a downtime in the wood uh income. But mm -hmm. in general I feel like Yeah, Nikov should be having the better position and now he's doing a great move. He's also going for a siege workshop himself. He already... All of Nikov's farms yeah. are about to expire too. <laughs> nice. That's always the best feeling you can have for. <laughs> I love that. I love that sound. That sounded exactly like a farm expiring, Dave. No, oh, that's what I was going for. So I'm happy. <laughs> and I remember playing Age of Kings, and then Age of, or the Conqueror's expansion came out, and yeah. I was so happy yeah. that. Villagers would automatically um, reseed, right? Or you could right? queue up farms. Yeah, so you yeah, could yeah. Queue up farms yeah. for yeah. them to reseed it. Now, obviously, yeah. this is before auto farm, but yeah. you could queue it up because I hated that sound. Absolutely yeah. hated it. Yeah, yeah. I definitely can relate to that one. In the middle, you queued up forty farms, if I'm not mistaken, right? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have Vilas here in the middle. Having the better position as the hill is very huge, but both players having a mangonel right now, and oh, Nikov usually is very good in those kind of situations. He also took a very good shot or made a good shot. Uh, Vilas's mangonel at 15 HP, and he has to be very cautious because if that mangonel is dying, Ooh. which is his. <laughs> He's that going didn't to even lose have it. a frame where it stopped, dude. It was yeah. just moving in one direction, yeah. shooting, and then moving in the other direction. Yeah. That was sick. Yeah. yeah. Very nicely done by Nikov. And now he's able to reclaim the position in the middle. And, you know, if you're against Tatars, that's usually not a good thing if they have such a good hill there. Yeah. 
but I don't think. I also think yep, you, like you want to keep control of the middle of the map too, because at any point, Sicilians can come forward and drop a free castle on your ass, basically. Yeah. Like you're not stopping it. It's so quick, yep. and if they get there, it could be big problems for you. So you want to definitely control this middle area and that hill in the center, mm. Mm. if you can. For sure. For sure. <sighs> this is, you know, these moments are always super tense. Because once you have mangonels included, there is always such a huge potential of mm -hmm. things falling apart in, in, in a second, right? So all of these, uh, these things can happen. Vilas in the meanwhile, he has three TCs already, so it seems like a great boom. And he has Heavy Plow, and he has Bosa. While Nikov on the other side, he only has the wood upgrades. But Dave, surprise, surprise, no farming economy upgrades so far. Well, you you would never know looking at his farming eco right now. <laughs> looks <gasps> looks pretty legit and organized oh, to me. God, seven on food right now, and he's about. I don't think to... he read the the manual. I guess he has some <laughs> sheep. I guess he has some sheep in the in the town centers when he makes them, right? Yeah. So that's some food eco. Oh, he's Ooh. trying to micro against the Manganel here. Good micro from Nikov. Splits Man. away from two shots. Amazing. Takes down the Manganel, and he still has his alive too. Yeah. Amazing micro. By Nikov, really well done, and uh, yeah, there's still one Mangonel remaining here for for uh, Viles, but yeah, he should be fine, right? L let's see. Nikov is doing a great job, micring. Dude, can, Valesa yeah. is like reading the splits too. He had enough of it the first time, yeah. and he read where Nikov was gonna split twice. The first time he got him, the second time it was a little bit too early. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. You can definitely tell that Nikov is uh, training a lot with the AM guys because the way he was uh, microing right now, that was definitely a typical AM standard, I would say. And well, now he's like he's yeah. always been super quick. It's just yeah. trying to get him to be less frantic. Yeah, you know what that means, like just no. less panicked what? in his movements, right? Ah, okay, okay. That's what frantic means, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Then we have two Mangonels coming forward for Nikov, and they are assaulting right now the Siege Workshop. So, Viles, you know, he in general doesn't have the worst situation, but it can can be very bad very, very soon. So let's see how he's able to defend here. On the north side, he's taking a great fight. And in the south too, in the middle. Everything's yes, yes, yes. dying for Nikov. Yes. What? He got a little bit too overconfident. Wow. Yeah. Like, look at the army numbers now, Dave. He has only 10 versus the 14. And Valesa's on stone. And remember yeah. what I said about controlling the middle of the map? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, the Mangonel is going to be killed. No, never mind. It's fine. Two versus two. And I, f I still think that Viles has the better position here. Just due to the fact that the skirms are just so more, much more tanky against the crossbows than the crossbows are against the, the skirms, right? Nika oh. has to be super frustrated with that shot. It was right in between oh. both Mangonels. Didn't get either of them. He's trying not to lose his Mangonels. The micro here is insane and Valesa is losing skirms because of it. That was a good attack round there. He loses a villager, loses another Mangonel, another Mangonel goes down. What a ridiculous series of events there. Yeah, for sure. And look at that, Dave. Um, Nikov is now trying to get the middle position with a castle. And let's see if... he loses if... the Mangonel, he has to cancel it. Yeah, he has to. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if he still wants to commit there. I mean, he knows that he's down in the Mangonel uh, department and... Oh, Valesa's coming oh. too! Uh-oh, and he's Sicilians! Uh-oh, Nikov! Danger! Danger! Abort, 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 abort! Oh, no! The Mangonel survives! Oh, that is so huge! Oh, God! That is so huge, Dave! He's losing and the down game. the hill too. Down the hill in the Sicilian castle. This is oh. the first time I've ever said this, but is denied in the middle of the map. Oh god. Oh god. But still, Dave, he has so much more resources and he's going up to in privilege right now. And you know what? Nikov, he is not going to up into in privilege very soon so far. Yeah, Crazy I mean, stuff. well, a big part of that is because his farming eco was added so late, right? Yeah, and he yeah, still has yeah. no horse collar. Nikov is yes. back. He was looking different. <laughs> <laughs> the imposter is gone. <laughs> the real Nikov has returned. Still no horse collar. Does yeah. have wheelbarrow, though, and now he's seeding tons of farms. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, Nikov, in theory, he should have a very good position right now, especially after what happened in the middle. But it feels like, uh, due to him adding the farms a bit too late, it could be his... How would you say? His his factor of losing, something like that? His mistake? I don't know. I yeah, don't whatever. Know. Big mistake. And the... Oh! It will Valesta save the Magnol? He does not. No. No. Keshix will die, though, to the TC, and the Skirms are working on the crossbows. I guess my question is, sure, Valesta's going to be up to Imp, but how long is it going to take him to transition? He goes for the stable now. This is his very first stable. He still has the foundation in the middle that yep. he probably needs to cancel and get another castle up. Yeah, he can't go into sergeants, really. Yeah, I'm surprised, Dave, that he is not doing that yet, because or has not done that yet, because I uh, usually... It's like the best thing he can do is delete the siege workshop, place the castle there, and then uh, get the trap out to kill the, the castle from Nikov, right? But the way it is shaping out right now, the game, it feels like Nikov is in a great position. Killing. Wow. <laughs> Those villagers was almost close. died, dude. <laughs> that was close. And the army's there. Oh my god. <laughs> Completely annihilated here. Oh. Yeah, this is, this is very bad. And now Viles is going for a very panic castle. That but castle's going up, though. Yeah, it's, it's Sicilians, yeah. But still, he's losing a, village, a few villages in the process as well. And Nikov, he doesn't have any village on gold right now. No, what? he does not. He's trying to use the market. He's trying to get gold that way. And he does have enough gold. He's going to click up. Yep. But uh, now the question is, what does Nikov make? Because he's got one crossbow left over. And it's yep. going to be Sicilian Cavalier, likely, yep, with Halberg, if Valesa can afford Halberg. Yep. I don't think he can, right? It doesn't look like that. And, you know, Kashyx, in theory, they should not be too bad against those units but anyway. He only has one castle for Nikov. He has and only one castle? Yep. Nine on stone, and he's yep. got 82. Okay, yep. 16 on stone, so Kashyx are Going probably what he wants to do. Yep. He definitely wants to uh, go for Kashyx here, but it could be due to all the action which happened throughout the last minutes that he just completely forgot about that, right? 57 farms with no horse collar. <laughs> this is this is sometimes so <laughs> hurting. This is sometimes so hurting. It pains me. <laughs> yeah, but... It, it, that's something we're kind of used to from Nikov most of the time, right? Not yeah. to take it as a negative thing, but he, that, that's kind of his stereotype, right? That he tends to forget those kind of economical upgrades. I think it's like a credit to him, the fact that he's he's so well known for it, we see it so often, and he's still so good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, is a credit sure. to, to everything that he can do as a player. Yeah, yeah. The capabilities he has, there right? There it is. There it Horse is. Color. coming in. And handcart too. Nice. So he, he took the moment to, you know, get those crucial upgrades here. And uh, that that's definitely important. Uh, second castle coming in for Nikov now on the hill. Uh, while losing all the mangonels here in the process. And it looks like overall there is a 10 villager discrepancy. Yes, yes, handcart. So that's a huge boost to his economy. Viles doesn't have that in return. Um, oh, Nikov needs to wall this off before the Cavalier get to that other castle. Yeah, but Nico Converted one of them, and yeah. the Cavalier are making their way over, but Keshik's are here. He should be fine. Yeah, and he doesn't also uh, see that the castle is going to go up now, but obviously he's, that's too late. That's too late. And now we have Nikov 12... Nikov enough yeah. for another castle, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he will be able to produce a healthy amount of Keshik's here, and... I think, in general, Kashyyyk should beat those cavalry in 1v1, no? Mm -hmm. I guess so. On the north side, both have uh, some outposts there as well. I feel like Nikov has control of the of the game. He has 125 villages against 113, 12 military against 15, and a bit more population than his counterpart as well. Yeah, I think Nikov has kept himself in a good position here. I mean, you yep. said it at the beginning. Making units against Sicilians, you want to go for gold units. Kashyyyk yep. are the gold units. Yep. And they actually uh, generate a little bit of gold as well for you as they're attacking. So it can yep. provide you with a few more Kashyyyks along the way. Mm. And Nikov is actually banking up a ton of reds. I think he's looking for elite Kashyyyk now. Yep. He will go for that now. Yep. He has that. 
And uh, I, I suppose that this is kind of the moment for Viles to make something happen. Uh, otherwise, I feel like Nikov is just going to overwhelm him completely in Dave. Yeah. I don't know what you do here as Valesa against Keshik. Elite Keshik. I mean, you could go in theory into Halberdiers, but that's not really something Sicilians want to go for, right? Um, I guess he just wants to play the cavalry himself, but it always feels like Nikov is going to have the better end of his. 160 Gold. HP, 11 base attack versus um, 140 HP, 12 base attack. Mm. But the Keshiks think, well, it's interesting. I don't know who wins this matchup head to head. Yeah, because the, the extra have more mm. armor as well. Yep, yep. It, it should be very equal there. Uh, however, Bless is going to transition into Halberdier Dave. And. I don't think he will have this, the time for that. How is there a hole? Oh, there is a hole. Hallelujah. <clears throat> wow, <laughs> Nikov doesn't have chainboarding armor. <laughs> yeah, not ideal. That's but... a lot of Keshiks, though. That's 29 yep. Keshiks, only 21 Cavalier, yep. and Valesa now struggling for gold. It's his turn as he texts in the Halberdier, and he does has no Cavalier in the production. So he's going to try and stay on top of this hill and take a good engagement against Nikov. Yep. Nikov probably wants that hill as well. And Nikov is clearing up villagers behind this. This feels like it might be one of the last fights here for Valesa if he loses all his cavalier because he doesn't yep. even have the the wood and food to really continue spamming yeah. Albedir. Yeah, doesn't doesn't look good for Valesa at all. Uh, down to 144 population. And uh, he does not have anything going for him right now in the game. And Nikov is just completely all over the place, right? Raiding on the on the main base and then also winning the fights here in the front and also on the north side. Just feels like having all the map. Keshik still in the back, harassing the farmers. Blast Furnace now coming in for yep. Nikov. Bless has had that for a while, but Nikov's economy behind this too. Yeah. Maybe even like delete villager territory <laughs> soon <laughs> he's still at 174 so he's fine but i'm surprised i'm i'm surprised that he's not adding any villagers you know in the previous sets we've always had the position where he had 140 villagers and he still kept adding yeah. and at one point he was like at 150 and then realizing okay i have too much here right now but uh wow this i'm just amazed how how great the sets have been so far in this tournament. Like every every game I've been casting has always gone to the decider. So giving us a lot of content here and uh, having the final going to the game five is uh, always a pleasure to have. <clears throat> yeah, really even play between them. Yep. There was like one moment there where the castles were going up and it feels yep. like if Nikov lost that Manganel, he loses the game. Exactly. For sure. I and he I, kept it alive. I think he killed two Mangonels from Valesa defending there. Yeah. I 100% agree, right? If that one Mangonel was down to 2 HP against two Mangonels and he somehow managed to win. Yeah. And you know, like just this bare moment uh, had such a huge impact on the game, right? And I also felt like that was the moment where Valesa a little bit tilted, I felt like. Because after that, <clears throat> his uh, play was not as smooth as we usually know it from him. Okay, good stuff, guys, good stuff. We Jordan, I'm back, we're into the game. Finally, man, finally, I've been waiting, Dave. Are you in the game already? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm loading in. I switched my scene far too early, so now I'm on the capture age thing. Everyone can see it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, so Dave, I'm just curious. I'm just curious because I've shown this map a couple of times already on my stream. But I just want to have your input on how that map makes you feel like. Because I have a very specific map in my mind, which it is similar to. I'm thinking of one. I don't know the name of it. But there's one that has like the little golds on the outside. That I can't remember the name of. I'm terrible with map names, dude. Like Because I only ever cast them. I never have to load them up in the... In the game room so i don't mm -hmm. know what they're called yeah are you is it a map where you're thinking of empire wars 
Yes. Acclivity. Is it acclivity? Yeah, it's acclivity. Acclivity was the oh, acclivity is the one with the thing down the center, right? And then you have your little hills and stuff that you're on. But I didn't remember there being the golds along the outside edge. Huh? That. Were there golds on the outside edge? Huh? I'm I'm surprised. Like acclivity is exactly the reverse of this map, right? Where you have in between, you have a hill instead of a um, shoot, and yeah. on the sides you also have uh, like hills or the higher plateau instead of shoots as well. Okay, well I completely misremembered it. So yeah, I think the That's map you were perfect. thinking about is um, how's it called? Uh, meadow? I think meadow. No. Okay. Lowland? <laughs> Maybe I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh. it gets in my, it's in my brain for about a week when I pass through the tournament and I just dispose of it. I don't know. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Okay, Dave. Uh, last map. One civilization we got right, which was Berbers for Viles. He's playing here in the north side of the map as uh, yeah Berbers in the red trunks and Nikov on the other side here in the south side playing in the blue trunks as Lithuanians. Lithuanian's so, interesting, interesting choice here. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Also, interesting relic generation uh, with four of the relics being over on Valesa's side of the map, which is something we usually look at when we're talking about Lithuanians. Let me see what we have here. Where are they? One. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a huge advantage for Vilesa in the relic department, that's for sure. I'm just wondering what the opening is going to be. Both players are going for the Deers and Nikov already going up super, super fast. So what we'll see from him is just a straight up scout play from him. And look, mm -hmm. Nikov on the south side, he is going for shorefish, which I absolutely love. He's not taking the berries, he's going for the shorefish. And yeah, Viles on the other side, he is taking the berries instead of the shorefish. With this map being in the pool, it makes me wonder why Valesa picked Indians on uh, the first one that we had, and not this, and didn't like save it. Surely there was a better civilization you could have gone for there, but maybe not. Yeah, I'm just thinking if you're using Berbers in the first one and Indians here, this should be better, right? But yep. maybe, maybe he was thinking that uh, with Berbers, you no know, reaching Castlage, you will have great possibilities with the cheaper cavalry units to. Uh, get a lot of units out soon in cast stage and then be able to raid your opponent to death. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was his thought process, but most likely I would have utilized Indians here just due to the lovely short fishes, right? And Nikov even going for another mill next to the deer and the short fish. Yeah. Ooh, that's great. a nice mill, I like it. Yeah, great placement, right? Great map awareness of uh, Nikov and just by how things are Shaping out, it feels like Nikov has the advantage here or the better build here in, in Dark Age or at the start. Dave, what are you thinking about the stone placement on well, this map? Well, we got these random one tiles and then I guess... Is it only one tile here? It is one tile, exactly. I I, per <laughs> I personally I personally love that because it puts your uh, the player into a position where he really has to think about how much he wants to commit onto stone here. So I think yeah. it's a nice twist. Especially with the Berbers. Like the Lithuanians, I guess latest are okay, but you can accomplish basically the same thing um, with like Paladins or Cavalier, right? Yeah. But yeah. Camel Archers give you a very kind of unique unit to go for with the yeah. Berbers. And if you have to go from one patch of stone to the other, it's going to be a lot harder yeah. to get into those. Yeah, for sure. Okay, two scouts here from Nikov on the north side, so he will be able to do some shenanigans here, but Vilas, he is standing well defended here with the spearmen, so nothing is going to happen here, I suppose. And now he goes out to the fish, okay. So he's mm -hmm. made two mills now, the second one coming forward on the double pond, and yep. another one on the <laughs> pond to the back. He's just going to defend with military for the time being, so he's... Yep. Waiting until all his turkeys and his boar and his deer and berries are in and stuff like that. And then he goes out to the external food sources instead of dropping down those farms. So we'll see what kind of food boost he gets from that. Yeah. 
I'm kind of surprised he has uh, chosen to make that, um, you know, that order. Mm -hmm. But okay, I'm I'm at least satisfied that he's utilizing the shortfish because if he had not done that, it would have been very very problematic and he would have taken a huge disadvantage compared to Nikov because Nikov has been uh, to the shortfish so early, right? And the quick balls are very much on point now. Oh, is I not... was just about to say the same thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he might get away with this fill though. It's a Berber oh. villager, but yeah, Nikov's uh, micro is just on point here, and it feels like Nikov is playing this one a bit faster here. Now the raid is also coming in for Viles here on the north side, or uh, yeah, from from Nikov's base. And is he able to trap those? No, he's Trying. not. Miss no. misclick, no. misclick. Yeah, it was a good idea, right? And he, in the meanwhile, he's losing two scouts. He's losing two scouts, Dave. Against those and spears. This is why. Uh, this is why players like Doubt won't even try for that. Exactly. <laughs> he'll just, he'll exactly. just let him run right past. Because if there's one thing that Doubt knows, it's his own limitations, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, he, he doesn't have an ego, right? He, he just accepts oh, that. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, never, not an ego. And Dao, no. Dao doesn't have an ego when playing. No, 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 no. No, no. no, of course no. Not. like he would be the last player we could think of to have a big ego. Have right? an ego. Yeah, yeah, I think if you were like, oh, oh wow, another oh, villager kill. Oh, that hurts Maybe? so much. No. That yes. hurts so much. Yikes. Just in time, sneaking in there and... Nikov has managed to get himself a lovely three villager advantage in the meanwhile, and he will be a far, a clo a far faster or f much faster to cast Lage than his uh, counterpart, I would say. Man, Dave, I can tell I'm already here. My brain is stopping to function here. Oh, you're getting caster brain. <laughs> no, I'm I'm getting tired here. <laughs> like, yeah, man. My, my brain is not working as it's supposed to anymore. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're getting you're getting the fog of being yeah. streaming for too long and especially yeah. casting for too long. You just yeah. you start saying words and you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> you know you're saying something, but you have no idea where the sentence is gonna end. <laughs> that Dave, it feels like this was one hundred percent perfectly described that you have been yeah. in this situation already. Yeah, yeah. It's like, for me, it's when I pass like the six hour mark and then things just start to blur together. <laughs> Especially when you are casting a uh, team game, Black Forest, right? Which every game one hour, then you're like, ah, oh. yeah. You, yeah, you feel it. You feel it. Uh, okay, Dave. So what are we seeing now? Nikov well, going for this. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's not too far behind, actually. And the fi yeah. I think the fish really helped him. He's yeah. going to run out of fish pretty soon. He's actually going to the stone. <laughs> oh, okay, and he's gone to the gold at the back, which he can't really quick wall. He's gonna have to defend that with just Spearman. And Nikov has seen that he's gone to the stone. And Valesa dropping down some farms now. So Nikov doesn't have farms. So this might be a little bit of an awkward transition for him. He did get Horse Scholar this time, but he's gonna have to drop a bunch of those down yep. to get Fudiko in. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has 12 on food right now. So in theory. If he is ready to plant more farms, which he is doing indeed, he will be able to sustain the two stable production here and he will be fo fully focusing on the night play. And that's the good thing for Burbis, right? Oh, no way. Okay, that was not in time. Um, almost had good quick balls here by Nikov. Uh, the Berber player, he doesn't mind that too much though because he has access to very cheap camels, right? And therefore, he in theory has the tools to him to be able to keep up with that. Okay, Valesa trying to get that last villager. Nikov has the spearman there, though. Yep. It's only been two eco or, uh, villager kills for Nikov. So it's not like the end of the world, right? No, of course, yeah, yeah. Berbers, I say, like, Lithuanians have the better start with the extra food. Yeah. But the speed on the Berber villagers actually comes into play, especially with farming mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. Valesa sure. has an advantage that'll last the entire game, basically. Exactly, exactly. I'm wondering, he's not adding a second stable yet. So I'm curious what uh, path he's going to go for. 
The good thing is for Viles, and I'm not sure if he is aware of that. Let's let's quickly check the fog of war. Yeah, he doesn't really know the relic positions except two, so he doesn't really have an intel where the other three are going to be at, and uh, he doesn't know that he has a very fortunate spot there, right? Does Nikov know where they are? Let's see. Oh yeah, Nikov's got great scouting. Yeah, Holy. that's insane. That's insane. He has such a great map awareness, right? Look at where the castle's forced to go from Valesa. Because he can't wall at the back there. He can mm. wall at the front. Usually you see that castle coming at the front, but there's yep. golds back here. Valesa yep. needs access to it. He protects the wood lines as well. Valesa has gone for a camel to open up, but the amount of knights on the field, the camel's not going to be able to get too much done. He's yep. going to need a monastery, likely, to push this back. Yeah, especially he only has two camels right now. And one stable producing the camels, right? But Nikov, he's just going to be overwhelming here, I, I feel like. It's just very good play by him. And in the meanwhile, he's also adding his 30 TC in the meanwhile. Uh, 40 village against, uh, villages against 37. 14 military against 7. It looks good for Nikov right now, I would say. Still, camel archers are dangerous, especially if you can mass them up enough. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Valesa going for that second TC behind. I'd just love to see a monastery from him to push these knights away. Also to start trying to collect those relics. I think losing that scout trying to go after that villager was a big deal yep. from Valesa because he yep. did, just had no information now on where the relics are. Exactly. And that's just a huge misplay, right? Committing the scout here. Uh, I'd rather have the scout alive and not kill the villager than the other way. And Nikov, I feel like he's in a position right now where he feels extremely comfortable, right? He knows exactly that his opponent even invested into a castle to get the Camel Archers out. And in burst case, when the Camel Archer number is getting out of hand, he can always go for the Elite Skirm transition. And with the Fainans, it totally makes sense because they are uh, walking faster, right? So he will be able yep. to catch up onto the Camel Archers. A monk now coming along. Camel archers are going to help out against those spearmen. And, and uh, wow, that was like the fastest conversion. Yeah, that they, was a very quick one. They formed a bond, Jordan. They yeah. formed a bond. Yeah, I, I, Dave, I told you about the bond. And ever mm -hmm. since you know that, now you understand how the monk conversion works, right? No, it doesn't help. I don't think anything will make me understand how an instant conversion works, especially if it's my unit being converted. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. And I, I don't think there is, well, there is an explanation for that, right? But it always feels like when you are the player and the opponent has the monk against you, it's always unfair for you, right? That's yep. always how it feels like. Yep. No. That's the way it is. Yeah, it feels so as well. At least for me, anyway. Yeah. Okay, Camel Archers. I like, this. these are still in the numbers. Okay, even when he loses, or especially when he loses one that uh, yeah, they're not scary yet, right? And in the meanwhile, Nikov has all the time in the world to gather himself a lot of economy, right? So I feel like Viles is on the back foot here right now. He has three TCs though. Nikov even going for the farthest relic first. He's gonna bring that back and then he's gonna have two relics. He'll probably bring another one back. He'll have plus three on his knights. Yeah. And it just keeps getting scarier and scarier yep. uh, if you're Valesa. He has added that third TC over there. And he does have Berber. So his economy is going to look pretty good as Nikov now goes for Wheelbarrow yep. uh, to balance it out a little bit. But the military advantage, like we keep saying, just firmly in Nikov's favor. Yeah. And the monk is getting spotted by a freaking spearman. So that gives him so much knowledge already, right? And Viles is going to be able to uh, kill that monk most likely. And then we saw a scout, a light, yeah, a scout killing a camel in the in the middle of the of the map. Look at that! Scouts are going ham today, Dave. Scouts are built different, dude. <laughs> oh, I like that one. TC from Nikov. Yeah, on I'll the like hill. It. Yeah, on the stone and on the shorefish. Mm. Ooh. Yeah. It just feels so nice. Yeah. And the monk has been found by villagers, but Nikov converted a villager from Valesa, and now Valesa has to be worried about forward buildings. <laughs> yeah. Around here. Yeah. I don't That's think he will good. go for one. I don't think he will go for one, but uh, in general, just 
a good map awareness, right? And Nikov, he's very unfortunate with the relic position. And he, he's still trying to get those relics in. I mean, I cannot blame him. He is uh, Lithuanian, right? You want to get those juicy relics in to get the attack boost on your knights. But um, yeah, Viles, he sh how many relics do we have right now? One to one. But in the soft side, <laughs> the relic and the monk are going to be shattered, I think. Yeah, Viles is paying attention He should have just here. stood still. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. He could have avoided yeah. this yeah. if he was just standing right there. Like, yeah. Berbers only see movement, you know? <laughs> but unfortunately, he pulled it towards the army and... yeah. That's what's going to happen. And Nikov actually did end up pulling that villager back safely. Camel Archer number now getting it's yeah. 13. So it's getting up to a relatively concerning number. Especially it's if you only have four monks and you're counting on conversions to any of the fights. And there we go. couple villagers killed yep. from Nikov. Yep. And that's, that's kind of a problem. But also, Nikov has a lot of knights. They are on plus one. And, yeah, but the problem is he cannot really trap those units, right? So he will always have to run after those. And Viles, he is kind of flirting with uh, going up to Imperial Imperial Age, Age pretty yep. soon as well. So I, you know, when when you're hitting Imperial Age and with the lovely Bracer as well, he in theory can do so, so much. Let's see. He's 25 villagers. No, 20, 23 villages behind though. So quite a big economy difference here. And the north side Plus two of... on the way. Plus two on the way for mm. the knights. And now the camel archer's coming in at the north, like you were about to say, I assume. Yeah, and, uh, all good. He still has to, he still has to micro the plus two knights at the back. Yeah, yeah. And these are 10 plus three knights as well. So you cannot stop. They exactly. will kill you. Exactly. He has to be microing all of the time. While Nikov, he, he doesn't really have to care, right? He just sends in the... The knights in there, and once they are uh, able to close the distance, like they're just completely shredding those camel archers. And Nikov, in the meanwhile, he has a, l a great economy 104 oh, against 80. And I don't think he will be trailing behind in terms of imprilage uptime too, too much there. Yeah, and he's looking for a castle too. And Valesa lost all but two of those mm. camel archers at the bottom. He yeah. kind of stopped, he was pretty distracted at the top side. Yeah. And now he's going to have to start building them up again. And like we said, the, the stone situation with this map, it's very difficult because they only have these one tiles. If you're going camel archers, mm. you want many castles to produce. Yeah. Right now, Valesa can just afford the second one. Yeah. And I guess there's a stone tile at the very back, so maybe he can afford a third. But then he's going to have to start branching out quite a bit. Actually forced into a, a TC on the other stone yep. on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of the big problem on this map if you are going for civilization which is basing a lot on their strength on unique units that you cannot really get the the castles out at the same number as on a normal game because the stone is just not there at the in, in mass right conversions coming in for both players i guess knight is gonna pick off the monk yep, yep. knight gets the monk the other two monks are gonna die here mm. Good fight for Valesa, but the castle's still going to be up for Jordan. Yep. For Jordan. And if exactly. Valesa, or not for, fuck. See, I'm at <laughs> six hours? Five hours and 58 minutes into my stream, Jordan. <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> oh, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff there. At least we're both on the same level now, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm like, dude, I know my limits, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Um, yeah, Nik the, the thing is, like, Nikov, he's going for the right units here, right? He's going for Elite Skirms himself now, and uh, getting the upgrades, flashing, ballistics, and the way the economy of Viles works right now is he will only have economy to sustain the Camel Archer production, but he will not really have the economy to switch to Hussars or Cavalry right now. Yep. So Camel... And if he or wants the, to yep. keep producing Camel Archers, he's going to have to... Hmm. You know, stall at the trebs, but he needs the yeah. trebs to push back the castle. Yeah. So his numbers are really going to struggle because of that. Yeah. He's also going for conscription instead of another trebuchet. So his trebuchet numbers are going to be a bit behind. And he wants to get another castle here on the hill there. 
And I think he should be able to get that. Score-wise, Dave, it's not too far apart. Economy-wise, let's not even look at that. Like a huge difference, right? Uh, 30, 35 villages apart. And uh, even the economy advantage for uh, Nikov in terms of the upgrades. Like, Nikov is looking to be in a very good position here. Hand card, Ooh. chemistry coming in. Bless is switching into light cab right now. Mm. If he could get some good raids, like Nikov's economy is going to be very open. Although he has added watchtowers at the back, which is Hallelujah. Nice touch. This is Age of uh, Empires 4 style. Yeah. But if he could get some light cab in there while holding with the Campbell Archers, which I think he can do mm. on this position, Nikov could have a really rough time yep. uh, at home. Yeah, for sure. But I, let's see. I don't think... Nikov is going to give Viles the time to, uh, to use his units for raiding. I think he will have to pay attention to uh, the middle and fight all the time. And look at the, uh, the knight in the south side. He's trying to raid, but there are two guard towers taking care of business here. Right, Viles is getting the plus two. If you come in with the plus two, well, he's still going to probably kill all those villagers. Yeah, this, it looks like that. And the main fight, it has been a good trade for Nikov. Even though he doesn't have any single armor on his ca uh, on his skirms, it's still going to be enough to push those back. And uh, 102 villages against 106. Yeah, Viles is trailing behind in terms of uh, population by 50 in, in general or in total. I don't think you can... He, Viles is trying to take this fight because he feels like he needs to do mm. something. Yep. But that's just bad against the skirmishers. You gotta you gotta bring your cavalry there. You got plus two now on yep. the light cab. Maybe just wait a little bit. Let the skirms poke away at your trebuchet. Mm. Don't waste your camel archer numbers and then go in when you have like eight cavalry. Maybe. Oh. What it oh, oh, he's going in for the bomber cannons. No Oh disaster. Disaster Dave. He lost everything. He literally lost everything he had, and he didn't have yeah. much to, to begin with anyway. So that's a and disastrous... And I bet you, like, Vales is going to look back at that game, and at this game, if he loses, and think about that moment. Like, yeah. why did I do that? I know yeah. I was in a disadvantage, yeah. but I, at least I had a chance to do something. And now Nikov might actually, <laughs> if he loses, might look at losing that bomber cannon and think, Hey, why did I send it that far <laughs> forward? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we, we must not forget both players... They've been playing for the last hours as well, so I guess yeah. they are a bit ex uh, exhausted as well. Uh, but okay, Nikov going for the switch to cavalry right now. And yeah, he doesn't have the resources yet to go for paladins. I guess he will wait a bit for that. But once paladins hit the fray, there's nothing which uh, Viles can do anymore, I think. And Nikov is just targeting the camel archers. Those light cap do have the final armor upgrade. So they are kind of tanking a lot of damage from the skirms, and they push them back quite a bit. Yeah. Cavalier on the field now. The Camel Archers can do decently against the Cavalier as long as the Light Cav hold back the Skirmishers, but the Treb will fall. Yep. Man, this is... I don't know, Dave. This is getting closer, I feel like. Mm -hmm. If Nikov had that Bomber Cannon, that second castle never goes up. For Valesa, he needs to build it somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Nikov can continue pushing here. Nikov is still doing well, though. The skirmishers are very deadly. Yeah. Um, there's only one light cab on the field. There's ten in the queue there from yeah. Valesa. But look at what Valesa is doing. He's got a villager in the right corner, and he's got light cab coming in. And this was the danger for Nikov, I think, getting yeah. raided at home, yeah. and you're not paying attention, yeah. and you still can't push back on the on the front side. Yeah. But still, Dave, if we are thinking about everything, like, Nikov, he is reacting immediately. And uh, he will not let another stable be planted here in his base. And just over 182 population against 125. Just yep. such a huge difference. And Nikov now has also resources to go for Paladin if he wanted to do that. And there is enough gold on this map, right? So in theory, it, it is an option for him to do so. Another bomber cannon being taken out it's by Light Cav randomly on the other side. Yeah. And the other one being taken out by Skirms. I don't know. 170 Paladin coming up for Nikov now. And I think that's going to be the nail in the coffin. Also, map control wise, 
Nikov having such a great position. He's also building another castle here on the south side. I think it would have been better to have it a bit more to the to the stone there, but okay, that's just my preferable prefer preference. And yeah, the castle is going to be repaired by Veles. He has a lot of stone still remaining in his bank account. But I don't think he's going to save that one for too long anymore. The Camel Archers just really haven't contributed much in a very yes. long time. Yeah. They're not even, like, really killing that many Cavalier because Nikov is keeping them back. And every time they come forward, the Skirmishers are sniping them. And Nikov yep. is more than happy to throw away a few Skirmishers to take out those Camel Archer numbers. Exactly. For sure. And Paladins is 20 seconds away. How many Cavalry does he have? Nine. So we will have nine Paladins. And... You know, it's always giving you a great feeling to have Paladins in a 1v1. It's in a 1v1, a, yeah. It's yeah. just a lovely feeling. And uh, that also is an indicator for your opponent that... Please get out of my game, I have enough resources to back that one up. And like you said, there's just no counter on the field right now to these Paladins. Maybe if they were elite Camel Archers, maybe yeah. if he had 40 of them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was all walled on the side, so... Yep. You know, Nikov had to funnel through a ch choke point. Maybe that's a play, but at the moment, Skirmisher's still coming forward. Paladins on the field for Nikov. These are 14 plus 5 Paladins with 15 in the queue. Yep. How many How many stables does he have? It, it feels like not too Only many. he got 4. He's four. got 4. Yeah, Thanks, that's not man. enough. He needs around 8 right now, right? Especially with the economy he's having. But the castle, Dave, is finally going to go down, doesn't it? Castle... yeah, he's given up on it. It goes down. We had some light cav doing work in the economy from Nikov, but those are all gone now. Nikov now goes for a castle on the left-hand side. There's a monk there from uh, Valesa, so maybe he can convert a villager, but it's not going <laughs> to stop it. No. And another Bombard Cannon goes down! 1 HP! Oh! oh the, last the last one! one the last one. Yep. That's an Olympic Javelin throw right there. <laughs> he did the spin and everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it made it work. It definitely made it work. And man, it, it's so crazy when you have uh, Camel Archer, or in general, ranged units in the castle, how strong the castle is. I, yeah. I was thinking he should have done that maybe earlier when the Skirms yeah. were coming in instead of yeah. losing them, but he does tap out. Yep. And Nikov takes the victory. Yep. And this is uh, Jordan's Medieval Brawl number one champion right here is Nikov. Nikov made it work. And I casted all the series from him. So, you know, it felt like I had a good good idea who's going to be winning today. No, it's just crazy, crazy stuff. Hallelujah. I, I'm so drained right now. So drained. Dave, thank you so much for being part of the, the cast. Yeah, man. Was... I'm actually really excited for these going forward. I think it's a really cool idea to have something, you know, yeah, for standard sure. every week. And uh, for sure, congrats to Nikov. Yes. How, who did he beat today? Who did he go through? First, Mr. Yo, 2 1. What? Yep. And then Winchester. And then Winchester. And then Valesa? Yeah. So that's actually kind of nuts, dude. That's the... absolutely nuts. Yes. Yes. Like. Phenomenal uh, tournament by him. Great stuff. Wow. Okay. Well, Jordan, it was a pleasure as always. Dave, Congratulations yeah. and well done on the uh, on the tournament. Thank you and, so much, uh, Dave. See more. Joe, then. Nikov, man. Congratulations on this. What the fuck? Amazing performance by you. Thank you so much. It was a rough bracket, I have to say. You had a, I don't know, like everyone. Yeah, that's. I think you played against the the strongest players there. You can you can ask for like at the beginning, US seed one against Mr. Yo seed eight. How did you feel going into that one? I felt a little weird, right? Especially yes. because Mr. Yo didn't rank me top ten, so I'm still resentful about that. I was top fifteen. I <laughs> asked him why, and he said that he forgot about me. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. friends for eight years already. <laughs> Well, I think the fact that you kicked him out is the best answer you can uh, show. It uh, felt good, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was every every set you had was very close, right? Uh, everything going to the decider match. Yeah, everything two one, two one, and three two. Nice. I think I got really lucky this last set because I think Viles misplayed the seeds. I think he wanted Indians in this map with all the fish, right? 
Yeah, but, instead yeah. of the first game. I think it was a mistake from his side. Yeah, for sure. But still, overall, I'm not sure how you feel about it, but I feel like you have stepped up, up your game. I think uh, th there are some things I'm doing much better than before. Yep. And there are some games that I don't research horse color for 50 minutes, like the other game. <laughs> yeah, but, that's, uh, it's, it's lately seldom. It's more, more things better than worse, I think. Yeah. I just need to keep working on the mistakes I keep doing. Yeah, for sure. I feel like ever since Deep Waters League, it feels like you're just playing better. You're taking uh, more care about the economy upgrades as well and overall the the other things you're doing in your game i mean you have always been exceptional in those things right and now you're just displaying that right and it was just lovely to see i'm really happy with my level today and i'm usually very like hard of myself and i yeah. feel i didn't do something good yeah but uh, today i think i'm satisfied with the performance for sure all things considered for sure i mean uh... You beating Mr. Yo Winchester and Vilas, you can definitely be proud of yourself there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Exactly. That's the reason, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I have yeah. to keep working on some things. Yeah. Did you did you practice the new maps a lot? Did you even check them or were you like, yeah, it's it's okay. Let's do it uh, No, I didn't. You Actually, didn't. Like, this map is uh, a Latin American tournament. It's yeah. the last game. Yeah. And I still didn't know the map. So I'm playing two tournaments in this map and I didn't know the map. <laughs> <laughs> Full disaster. Yeah. But ne next time you will know them. Yeah, yeah. Like, Mr. Yo asked for that uh, double this map. I check what was that. I'm like, dude, <laughs> seriously, just pick Nomad, please. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy that he picked that. And in general, yeah. how, did you, how did you like the format? I mean, it was a bit longer than I was expecting, but overall it felt smooth. Uh, what was your impression as a player? I personally don't like best of three. I think best of five mm -hmm. is so much better and it's more fair. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know that these kind of like express tournaments in one day, you cannot afford that, right? Unless yeah. you want to stream for 15 hours. Yeah. So yeah. this not the amount of games I like in the first initial rounds, but yep. uh, I understand perfectly. So it's completely mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. And do I'm just missing a water map here. But what do you I say? wish there was one water map. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Some people hate them, but uh, yeah. they're like part yeah. of the game. Yeah, yeah. I think just water maps are so boring to watch for me personally. That's why I don't really want to have them. But I understand because your water skills are one of the best we have in the game. So I understand why you want them. Yeah, I want another home map. I actually had to like... <laughs> this map? No. This other map? No. It was yeah. like picking the map. I didn't yeah. want to play the list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really I have know. a home map here. I know, I know. <laughs> Okay, awesome stuff. Uh, Nikov, the next one is going to be in two weeks and uh, we already have a confirmed price pool of $400. So yeah. I hope to see you there again. As long as you don't lose puntos, I think I'm fine. Yeah, it's fine. But I will play if I got the chance again, for yeah, sure. It fine. was a nice uh, experience, so yeah. I'm glad to have there. Glad to know that there will be another edition. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's the plan is to have it every two weeks now, right? Yeah, and then, yeah it's uh, a great uh, initiative. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, awesome. I hope uh, the players are going to be motivated then again to play in the 1-1 one -one ladder. I think we need yeah. that. Okay, Nikov, then yeah, uh, yeah. thanks like again. Four, small one one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, then Nikov, thank you so much again for participating. Congrats again and uh, just send me your pay PayPal, please. Then I can yeah, sure. make it. Thank transfer. you so much for the tournament and All see good. you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, guys, that was Nikov who was able to clinch the victory for the very first edition of Jordan's Medieval Brawl. Guys, I would love to go through the feedback, but I'm, I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so, so tired. Did you just overall impression? Did you guys enjoy? Was there anything you felt is missing? Nick of the Brawler, yes. It couldn't be better. Jordan, thanks a lot. Thank you. Habla Espanol, Jolly. Me no habla Espanol. Send me your people, please. <laughs> uh, you guys, you enjoyed. You need map energy. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm waking up a bit earlier than most of the people here. I woke up today at 5.30. So, you can imagine I'm getting a bit tired. Uh, I like the way it was. Okay, perfect. We need the Lord. Well, he's trying to qualify for the next event, guys. Mm, well, that's your first mistake. Yeah, I wouldn't really consider that as a mistake. Sign sounds like uh, not our problem. Yeah, I know. 
I usually sleep at 5 a.m. man. Yeah, most people do that. A new tournament in 15 days? No, in 13 days. It's going to be on a Wednesday. Do you play AoE4? No, I'm not. I'm not playing AoE4. I used to play at the beginning, but not anymore. Today event best of five quarters one day and semi-finals and uh, finals one day the other day. That's that's the other concept which I had in my mind. I decided against it. Wednesday, why not Thursday, please? Yeah, I don't I don't uh, I haven't really fully committed yet on the decision, but it's most likely going to be Wednesday, Snake. Most likely going to be Wednesday. That way you also have the least at least the collision with other events, I suppose. Nico, thank you so much for the raid. And congrats once again. Uh, hola, hola, people. Como <laughs> esta? I'm, I'm uh, sure you guys are very, very proud of your Nikov there. Clinching the victory. Great stuff, really. Really uh, high, high level play. 